Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. The video on the OG Arturia drum brute is one of the most watched on this channel. And also one of the episodes I got the most flack for. Mostly because it was one of the rare occasions where I didn't like the instrument at all. Because, you know, reasons. Today we are going to talk about its little sibling, the leaner and more compact drum brute impact. This 2018 fully analog drum machine is not only a cut down version of the original, Arturia redesigned most of the sounds and even included a cowbell. I'm intrigued. At the first glance, the Drum Brute Impact is ticking all the Las Vegas mode boxes. Aerodynamic design, a streamlined sequencer in the tradition of Arturia's Beatstep Pro with all the bells and whistles, smooth backlit rubber buttons and a nice multifunctional touch strip. The knobs feel great and are only a tiny bit wobbly. It is still hard to tell if I will miss the almost iconic sap of the original. But the 10 voices of the impact offer a complete set of sounds. Kicks ranging from punchy to boomy, snare 1 is based on a tonal bloop, snare 2 comes with a catalogue of noises, classic electro goodness and even clap sounds. The very analog hi-hats have a character of their own. There's only one channel and set of controls for the two slightly underwhelming toms. I'm a big fan of the cymbal sound, living in symbiosis with the untweakable cowbell. The analog FM section sounds great, is super versatile. and reminds me of one of my favorite drum machines, the Electribe ER1. Every drum channel can be modified with a color parameter globally or on a per step basis. The effect it has on the drum voices differs greatly. My favorites are the aforementioned clap and the pitch envelope of the FM synth. If you are used to parameter locks slash motion recording slash insert favorite automation buzzword here, you might be disappointed. The color settings are the only ones that can be controlled by the sequencer. Everything else is what you see is what you get and can't be tweaked using MIDI messages. We have briefly mentioned the touch strip. It's great for loopy fills. drum rolls and programming them trap hi-hats. Arturia's sequencers have an excellent reputation for a reason. Pattern lengths of up to 64 steps, swing and random can be applied globally and per track, there's unquantized recording and I'm looking forward to a lively discussion about the difference between polyrhythm and polymeter in the comments section. I'm missing real velocity though. You will have to make do with normal and accent, not only when using the internal sequencer but also via MIDI. The master filter of the OG drum roots didn't make it onto the impact and was replaced with a meaty distortion circuit. Solo and mute groups are very well integrated, there are plenty of sync options, corners were cut in the output section but it still makes sense somehow and 5-pin MIDI is much appreciated. Talking of MIDI, the USB port can be used for MIDI communication and managing the unit using the MIDI Control Center software. Song modes are still not my thing and the Drum Brute Impact is readily available more or less everywhere for prices slightly below the 300 interstellar credit mark. Arturia took a lot of great features of the OG Drum Brute, put them into a more portable enclosure and gave the overall sound an update. Is the Impact the better drum brute? 
You have already heard the impact in today's intro tune. Probably not your go-to drum machine if you are in the YouTube show intro tune business. I wanna know how it fares in a minimalist dollar setup. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Although the kicks still sound a little unorthodox and its controls are limited, I see more real-life uses for it than for both kicks of its predecessor combined. The snares and heads have a very distinct analog timbre you either love or hate. I really liked the delay FX on the FM sound and coincidentally I did some pedal shopping over the holidays. Let's go further down that rabbit hole and make full use of the machine's individual output. <laughs> That's my jam! The impact works well with pedals, the sequencer is very inspiring and the mute and solo groups make jamming almost too easy. It's a pity that the cowbell sound of the impact isn't tweakable, but we all know every cowbell is sacred. Let's celebrate it in this lo-fi drift funk cowbell house that will make you wanna drive ridiculously fast in an overpowered 80s supercar. The two drum brutes are well designed and come with a remarkable set of features and a very unique sound. However, no matter how much I wanted to like the original, I had a hard time integrating its sounds into my music. I do like the sounds of the impact though. While it is seemingly more limited, the sweet spots are wider, it's punchy and sits in the mix nicely even without having to apply tons of processing. All this being said, it is not without flaws. The limitation to two velocity levels totally sucks, the snares are special, the toms are missed opportunity and don't get me started on what they did to the cowbell. So do I need another drum machine? Of course I do. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 